That was clinch, the unbreakable damage. Oh. Because you'd be able to do like clinch launch into Fatal Blow too, to be un, uh, un unbreakable. Uh, ah, so Sub Zero is one that I've been looking forward to showing for a while. Um, he could be very, very sweet. Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. Arctic Trap and Rising Ice. That's that is the variation I want to see. That is the variation I want to see. Um. Now, the variation everyone is saying they want to see with Kano is Biomagnetic Pull and Snake Bite. Because Biomagnetic Pull, if the, uh, it pulls the opponent in, and if they have um, if they have knives in them, it pulls them out and does extra damage. So there's a gimmicky synergy. I don't want them to do that because I don't think it's anywhere near helpful enough. And you don't need Biomagnetic Pull if you have Snake Bite. What I would like to see is either Snake Bite and Biomagnetic Trap for, like, no jumping, which wouldn't, like, for a character with, like, in, in his current state, this would help. But it would help point blank, and but his mids still aren't, like, the best for dealing with, you know, um, I suppose general crouches and stuff, and his, 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 his benefit off of pokes aren't amazed, aren't the best in the game. I actually would quite like to see Optic Blast. So Snake Bite and Optic Blast, I think, could be a really solid variation. And I'm going to go into detail now. The pull is a combo tool, yes. But you don't need the pull if you have Snake Bite. Because the pull scales massively. Like, Biomagnetic Pull scales combos harder than ever necessary. Optic Blast is a mid. Which is why... I'm actually going to talk about Kano first. Because if, if Optic Blast, like, I'm open to being wrong, but if Optic Blast is functions the way I think it does, I can see it having a place. Uh, no, I have not gone over Jade. Not yet. Okay. Okay. So, okay, that is a mid. Now, now, <clears throat> snake bite. So, if we're talking Kano, snake bite is the obvious one. Out of all the moves that haven't been used, this is the one that would have the highest chance to make Kano do the highest damage. This this gives Kano juggle and it gives him launching combo potential off of every every button that he could need it. So 1-1 one, one becomes a launcher. For those of you that haven't seen Snake Bite down back three, it's this, it's mid overhead on hit, just knocks down, but could be amplified to launch the opponent and, and pop them up into the air for a free hit follow-up. Um, the reason that is so good is because a huge problem that Kano has, which is confirmable damage, conversions, anything like that that he normally struggles with, like, Ripper can launch with standing two, and that's it, right? And back two. But, you know, they have their drawbacks. Snake Bite turns standing one into a launcher. Forward two into a true launcher. Um, forward one, two into a launcher. Two, two into a launcher. All of these amazing buttons that would be so much better if Kano just got something from them, he now does get something from them. Um, decent damage too. If you open up with, uh, you know, um, let's say you get standing one, let's do forward two into just Kano ball. That's one bar 280. That's that's not bad at all. Um, Kano ball would be your ender in this variation. So forward one two, you can get, uh, you know, 230 and get 23 percent. That's not bad. If you open with forward two. This by itself is decent damage, over 300 just for that. Um, no, that 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 uh, that synergy scrocker is if you've got manhandled and snake bite, which I don't think has a place and breaks the rules of the variations that I'm making. Um, so snake bite would be good for general combo damage. Um, if you're playing for like down one special, snake bite is good because if if you if they block the down one and try move, or if they block a down one and try and poke, like let's say. Let's say he uh, reverse. Let's, let's let's say he reverses with a 
uh, I don't know, throw. Can't make him press a button. So let's, let's say he's going to reverse with a button, right? Um, let's say we do this, and it was a button he pressed. He's now going to get launched, and you can turn it into, you know, a combo if you want, or you can turn it into snake bite again for a better knockdown. Move forward two, new snake bite, and then you've got a little bit of Oki point blank, which is scary. Um, you also get much more damage off his crushing blows. So if I if I launch with down two, for example, uh, not human, custom no block. There we go. So. You're getting 46% off a down two. In the corner, you're getting even more. Um, obviously, if you get a jump kick mid-screen, so if you get like... Let me see if I can space this. It's kind of weird. You're getting 34, 340. In the corner, you get some decent damage. Oh, 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 no. I know the combo. Th this is flashy. You'll like this. You'll like this. You'll like this. I've messed it up. Darn it. You're getting close to 50%. You know, 500 damage almost, ending in the Kano Ball, uh, which is really cool. You get uh, jump kick damage. Can I do this again? Okay, you can't. So jump kick damage turns into... Uh, 380 with the Kano Ball. Um, you get a decent amount of, of damage using just this uh, by itself. Now, Optic Blast would be nice because uh, it is a mid projectile. You know, this this means that they, they can't crouch. So this is a five, you know, it looks a little bit low on the damage, but 5% for a projectile like this. Like, look at its travel speed. That is fast. Like, that is fast for a move like that. Um, like, you can really get this out. Like, you can almost start the move before the first one is connected. And Kano, who normally gets really zoned out, now has this amazing fast projectile to kind of just keep things going but the best thing about this is it actually has a crushing blow um if it counters or punishes so let's let's say he's gonna crouch them and be like oh i'm bored of this i'm fed up of this and he tries to throw an ice ball let's say let's say i'm you know i'm, I'm firing at him and he's just like oh screw this i'm gonna start throwing my own and i hit him with mine 220 damage crushing blow um, so it's gonna get you a nice chunk of damage in the Keep Away War. I don't know if it can be used for- I've actually not used this variation, uh, before. I wanna see- I wanna see if there's any combo potential in the corner very quickly. Cause that's pretty much the gist of it, right? Snake Bite. That's very rude of you, Sub-Zero. Uh, Snake Bite gives you combo potential. It turns all of his buttons into a launcher, which is really useful for how good those buttons can be. Um, you can end in Snake Bite as the ender. To, to keep Oki, you can end in, you know, Cannonball to get decent damage. Um, and it gives you more damage off your down twos, your jump kicks. And generally across the board, you get, you know, more more reliable damage uh, due to Snake Bite. And it gives you kind of a counter poke option off of your pokes if you think they're going to press a button. Optic Blast is just that mid projectile. Good for keeping up, you know, not terrible damage, not high either. But it's mid, it's fast, it has a good crushing blow. Now I'm going to quickly see if I can get combos with this. I'm actually not... I, I want to see if this is possible, because it would be really cool if it is. But I don't know if it is. No, that's definitely, definitely not happening. Definitely not. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening. I don't. I, that's definitely not what this is meant to be used for. Snake Bite is unsafe. Snake Bite is unsafe. Uh, Optic Blast is... Let me show you. Snake Bite is punishable, and... Optic Blast is minus 15. But it would give you a mid option that, you know, if you're really if, if you're trying to check them after back one, um, you know, this is a mid, so they will get hit by that if they're mashing, whatever. It is still minus 13, so it's probably gonna be unsafe from that range. Um But you know, it's 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 something. It, it's something there. Staying one to optic blast. No, it, it definitely won't. It definitely won't. It, it doesn't recover fast enough. But I don't you wouldn't need it to do that. Snake bite gives you enough damage by itself that you wouldn't need extensions like that, right? Um, the snake bite combo for back one. Unfortunately, it does not. I'll, I'll show you, but it does not. It might in the corner. Okay, in the corner it does. So you could do this as a check. 
And if they mash, um, if they mash, they'll get hit. But mid screen, it doesn't. Um, but you wouldn't need it to. Uh, it would be very nice if it did. But things back one isn't hit confirmable anyway, so you'd kind of just be risking it. But it would be risking it for a big launch, so that would be nice. Uh, if buffering, it would be cool for that too, but it's it's not really necessary. Now, uh, Sub Zero, where is he at? There we go. So this very oh this variation is cool, dude. This variation is cool. That's not a pun. Shut up before you even say it. Uh, Rising Ice and Arctic Trap. Rising Ice is this, Damac 3. Uh, knocks down. Big thing about this move is can be amplified. And if you amplify it, you can uh, recover very quickly and uh, get nice combos. But you can also do jump in normals as well. Which I can imagine in the corner has something. So uh, if you do. Uh, in the corner, I, I think it only works in the corner if you get that. So you can't move with them. So mid, mid screen, you'd get something like uh, ice uh, standing three lifts, and then something like that, right? So he gets some really cool damage. Um, he gets some really cool damage mid screen off of rising ice confirmable. So if you do get if you do get a wayward ice ball, you can dash in and get some decent damage from it. So good damage on trades. A little bit, a little bit more. Um, now, uh, in the corner, actually, but before I move on to the trap, I'm going to, I'm going to check corner stuff on this. So, let's do this. Now, I want to get in the, okay, corner, you actually have one. Um, back to two, rising ice amps, standing, standing two. Okay, no, I, 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 I've seen that. Jump two, standing two. Okay, so you can. So, let's say you get this. I want to have a look. Aha! But it does work. Right, so you do a jump two, probably, or jump. Let me try jump, jump kick. Okay, so I don't think though. I, I think it has to be a jump two. I don't think anything else will reach. Okay, so you, you, you get to do that, which is cool. So in the corner, you do get an extension. You can do a uh, rising ice amp and then stunning uh, jump to. Uh, so you do get a little bit of extra damage, which is nice. Yes, you, you, you could do the jump normal mad early. Like the second you amp it almost. Yeah, that's actually crazy. You, you can do that the second... You can do the jump normal. Like, the second you amp, you immediately become able to do the jump normal. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm doing it too late. I, 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 my brain isn't telling me you can do it that early. Uh, but there, there's, there, there is more you can do. I'm not even remotely doing... Um... I'm not even really doing optimals. You could do Rising Ice twice. I, okay, but before I move on, I kind of want to see that. I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. I'm going to do Standing 3. I'm going to do Standing 3. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I really want to show this off. I really want to show this off. God, I'm doing it too early now. Yeah, Rising Ice isn't even the best thing about this variation either. That's what's funny. Oh, there's there's like there's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot to doing it. You can actually do this. I can feel this is gonna work. They do the jump too. Wait, what? Stand in two, stand in two, stand in three, rising ice. Jump two, stand in two, one, two, four. Oh, 
I feel like you could definitely get it twice though. Oh, it does work. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of nice. Oh, okay. So I made this variation without even knowing that was a possibility. So that's even more asserts the fact that I would love to see this. Um, I'm gonna after I've done after I've shown off the variation, I'm gonna try and optimize that a little bit. But I don't want to waste too much time on this for the sake of the video. That's a cool combo, and just just rising ice by itself. That's the o only rising ice is the reason you can do that. It's actually mad cool. Um, now, uh, the main reason this variation would be really interesting is the Arctic Trap, which is this game's uh, clone, pretty much. It is the, this. It functions closer to Boraicho's Far in MKX than it does an Ice Clone, in the sense that it doesn't absorb projectiles. Um, you know, it isn't like an armored wall or whatever. Um, but if they hit it in any way, they will. You know, they jump into it. If they you know, move into it, whatever, um, they will get they will get frozen. So like, if I if I summon this and then make him touch it, he's gonna get frozen in place. Um, obeys all of the normal freezing rules that ice does, so you can't do this and then, you know, refreeze them because, uh, you know, it can't be frozen more than once in the same, in the same combo. Uh, but, uh, the good thing about Arctic Trap is that, again, it is a really good setup tool. So if you do land, the good thing about Rising Ice and Arctic Trap together is you can really, you can use the increased juggle potential of rising ice to set up arctic trap off of something like this if you hit the ice ball and you get rising ice uh a slight step back into back to this and there you go you now have arctic trap on the screen so if you if you do ice and then uh normal back to standing by itself um they they should be too close it shouldn't work what you do is you uh you launch them with this and then yeah, you, you don't really want that to happen. You want it to be far enough away that they don't stand up and it detonates straight away. You want it to be on. And the way you do that is rising ice, slight walk back. And uh, you do rising ice, slight walk back, and then back two. And then they will be far enough away. Uh, I'm going to show it off in the, in the combo just to show. Okay, that's, that's a sign you've done it wrong. <laughs> And then if you back throw them onto it. Oh look. That's not bad damage, is it? For a combo into a throw reset. <laughs> it's pretty good. <clears throat> As you expect, you can throw them into it. You can amp slide them into it. I wouldn't really know what the optimal is off that, but you can just do something like that. Um <clears throat> Also means you can uh, do it in the corner. So if I if I get him here, I confirm, and then I can put it on them. So as they stand up, it's going to be there. So on uh, if they block on wake up, it's making also block. And then that's going to be plus God knows how much because he's blocking it on his own wake up. Which means on hit, you're going to get a combo. And on block, you're going to have him blocking it. Obviously, he can delay wake up. He can roll out of it, you know. Um, but it does have MKX Grandmaster effect where uh, if I knock him down, I'm going to make him roll. Make him wake up roll. Forward roll. The question is, do I throw him into it? Okay, I do. And then here we are. <laughs> Welcome back to MKX. Um, Arctic Trap. When done on block, obviously you'll die. If you if you if you get hit while summoning it, um, you will get hit and it won't come out. You'll die for it. Uh, but the big thing about Rising Ice and Arctic Trap together would mean that you get real big damage if you want it. Um, more confirms and an easier way to set up the trap. This would be really fun. Um, wake ups will destroy it as well. Yeah. If 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 the trap hits Wake Up Invincibility, uh, the trap is destroyed. So if he does Wake Up Up Three against it. He destroys it with his wake of invincibility and um you know will hit me so it's not it's not going to be as oppressive as it was in mkx i imagine um 
Let's go away on hurtle block. Uh, let me let me try it. I'm gonna control and make him just do it. Oops, I'll make him do it longer. On block, no. Now I'm gonna make him do it on it. On hit it does, on block it does not. So the Arctic Trap does not go away on block. <laughs> I had to do that. I had to squeeze one in there. I had to squeeze one in there. Um, but yeah, this would be really sick. This this this, this would be really interesting. Um, so if if no, it's not blocking. The, the the act of the wake up makes it disappear. The act of the wake up attack makes the Arctic Trap disappear. The the invincibility makes it disappear. Um, but yeah, that, that would be really interesting to see because it would give Sub-Zero really interesting combos. Uh, obviously the Arctic Trap gives him that, that layer of mix-up that he doesn't have normally. Um, but an additional thing that I haven't mentioned either, an additional thing that is good about Sub-Zero in this variation is rising ice combos off of the low, um, which isn't as important because you've got the ice ball, but, uh, overhead! He does combo from the overhead, so it would give you a launching special off of the overhead button. Um, which would be scary. And it also retains the slide, so you get the slides crushing blows. This would probably be the best variation. Um, I imagine if it went in as is, it would be a bit too powerful. But it would be cool. It would be cool. And I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, next characters.